So typically how this works is uh, I do share with you guys what I'm learning, what God has shown me. And this morning he brought something back up that is, how many of you guys have ever done something that worked? And then you, it worked so well, you just stopped doing it? Anybody ever done that? And you go back and you're like, why isn't this working? Like, what? why did things used to be the certain way? And then you're like, oh, look what I used to do. Why did I stop doing that? It worked. We do it in business all the time. We, we, we do it in life all the time. So this is one of those things for me. And what I want to show you guys, maybe you've heard this before. Um, maybe it's something that you've got some preconceived notions about. We're going to dive into the word and we're going to clear some things up. But there is a law that God put into motion. And when we learn to work with it and just cooperate with the law. See, you know, you just talk about um, laws of the universe. That's actually accurate. God just put them into motion. He set those things up for us to use and be successful with. Now, people have, you know, universal people, universe people have, have taken it incorrectly and they're trying to do it without God and some different things. I'm not talking law of attraction or nothing like that, guys. But what has happened is he's given us, I'll show you the scriptures, a formula to be successful. And we need to understand how to use it. This is something, again, like I said, I used to do it all the time. And now it's something I've kind of done. I do it here and there. But we're going to just dial it in. And God just brought back to my remembrance this morning. He said, hey, don't forget the power of the spoken word. Don't forget the power of the spoken word of God. And it hit me. I was like, oh, yeah, I used to be so intentional with this. And I was looking at some of the results I've had in the past, and I was like, man, I'm going to go back to those results. And God's like, yeah, but don't forget the power of the spoken word of God. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to hop over. We're going to look at some scripture, look at some notes. You guys will have access to this to these notes. I'll I'll put them in. If you guys have got my notes in the past, it's the same Google document. It's just at the bottom. So we're going to hop over. We good? Y'all see it? Rob? Okay. Looks good. All right. The power of the spoken word of God. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. And listen. This is the tip of the iceberg. Like, it was crazy how many scriptures there actually are. How many deeper trainings when you look at here and here and you're like, wait a minute, that was him speaking the word and getting the result. It just comes up so often. Um, so just so you know, these notes are tip of the iceberg. It is not by, not close at all to the amount of scriptures there actually are on this topic. So the power of the spoken word is one of the most powerful forces that God ever created. So powerful, in fact, this is how he chooses to operate himself. We see this at the very beginning. God created the world and all that we see by saying and calling. He said, let there be light. He called night and day. And he repeats that pattern. And as he says it, what happens? It gets created. This is even how we get saved. All right. The scripture says in Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, if you confess with your lips, if you speak and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose again for your sins, you shall be saved. That's the paraphrase. But you get the concept, the way we receive from God is we believe and we speak. Paul said it in 2 Corinthians. He's quoting David, who also said it back in Psalms. We have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scriptures. He's quoting David in the Psalms here. When it says, first I believed, then I spoke in faith. And this is, this is not my words. This is Paul's words right here. So we also first believe, then speak. Isn't that interesting? Believe and speak. Believe and speak. Believe and speak. We confess with our lips. We believe in our hearts. We believe, then we speak. 
This is the process of receiving anything God has promised us. Now, what I'm teaching is, in essence, it's it's foundational. This is how we ought to live. Let's look at Romans 4.17. As it is written in Scripture, I have made you a father of many nations, talking about Abraham, in the sight of him who he believed. That is, God who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So in context, Paul was talking about Abraham. And if you remember, God called him Abraham, changed his name from Abram to Abraham, calling something which be not, which means Abraham means the father of many nations. He hadn't even had one kid yet. He was calling things that are not as though they were. Calling things into existence. Again, we're following the pattern, his method, his mode of operation. Now, if we learn that this is how God operates, he calls into being that which does not exist. He speaks, he calls, we believe, we speak, believe, we speak, confess and believe. Ephesians 5 says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do. So we should imitate this method. I don't have the scripture in here, but it just came to me. What did Jesus say? You only hear me say what I heard my father say. Right? The mode of operation. He's imitating his father. He's imitating God, too. You only see me do what he tells me to do. He's imitating God. Uh, we learned at the beginning that God, well, here it is in, in Genesis 126. God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Okay, you guys getting the foundation here? You seeing how it works? All right. Isaiah 55, 11. It's the same with my word. I send it out. And it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. That's what happens when you send out God's word. He used it here in Psalms 107. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Sending the word, it heals, it delivers, it produces, it accomplishes, it prospers. That's the power of speaking God's word word now you guys know uh i'm known for having a lot of scripture the reason is it helps our belief it should there's a lot of times you hear somebody teach and just barely quote a scripture and i'm not knocking that but what i do i do this because it helps me see it over and over and over and over I mean, we did it uh, last week or the week before. We did that teaching on on the scriptures that teach us how to ask and how to pray to God. And I don't know if you guys remember that, but man, it blew my mind how many scriptures say you can ask God for anything and it will be done for you. Over and over. Well, I think we had 12 or maybe 14 scriptures. That just straight up said, you can ask him for whatever. He'll do it. The reason I do that is because we have these beliefs built incorrectly in us. We would say, well, you can't ask God for anything, Trav. And it's like, well, you put that limit on there. You can't ask him for something bad. Yet yeah, you're not going to. Stop. What are you doing? What are you arguing that for? The scripture says, if you if your word abides, if his word abides in you and you abide in him, ask him for anything you want and he'll do it for you. Well, if his word's abiding in you, you're not going to ask for anything bad. That's ridiculous. No one's going to pray for that anyway. But wouldn't it crazy how many scriptures say these things that we didn't even know it said it? We've read it, glossed over it, didn't sink in, didn't get it in our hearts, didn't get it rooted in us. And the problem with that is God's given us this, this book. It's, it is in a way... A success manual. He's like, if you do this stuff, you'll win. I'm trying to get my people to win. Y'all just, I'm telling you what to do. Let me show you. 
And I feel like my role is to help extract God's word, teach it to you guys, but in a way that you take action on it. So it's not just information. You're like, oh, that Bible study was great. I felt good. Good word, Traff. Like, no, no, no. It has to change how you behave. I heard a quote that says, the way you know you've learned something is that it changes your behavior. So by the end of this, I want your behavior to change. I want you to implement something new in your life that you weren't doing before this call. And if your behavior changes, guess what else will change? Your results. That's what I want for you. All right, so we're, we're over here. And let's keep going. Let's look at a couple more, and then we're going to get into, into some, here's what you do. Job 22, 28. For, this is a powerful one. You shall decide and decree a thing. Decree means to declare or command. And it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. And that's telling you to do it. Proverbs 18, 20. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth. And with the consequence of his words, he must be satisfied, whether good or evil. There's a consequence to your words. When you guys read this stuff and you hear this stuff, I want you to stop and think about what it's saying. There's a consequence to my words? How many of you guys have saying, I'm not going to name any names, but... You've seen some of these songs from the the popular singers today, and man, it's it's about sleeping around, and it's about doing crazy stuff, and it's about all all this wild living. And they're like, "Oh no, it doesn't mean anything, Trevor. I just like the beat, it's catchy." The Solomon, who God made the wisest man to ever walk the earth, said, "There's a consequence to your words." So, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be saying that junk. And when my kids, if I hear my kids start quoting something they heard on YouTube, that's not godly, that's a little bit just worldly. We don't really listen to music that does that in our house. But from time to time, I'll hear them quote something, or maybe they heard the music somewhere else, or they heard that, and they'll kind of be singing along, and I'm like, ah, where'd you hear that? And then we talk about it. I'm like, hey, man, here's why that's not good to say. And we get that out of their vocab. There's a consequence to your words. Some of you guys need to check yourself and you need to have like accountability. Like Rob can call me out if he hears me saying words that are going to have a negative consequence. And it says you must be satisfied with them, whether good or evil. Look at the very next line, the very next scripture. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it, death or life. There's a consequence to your words. So we say, we say, we say jokes are a lot of us, we got to tighten this up in our lives. We have phrases, we have sayings. I'm scared to death of this. Oh, I was dying. Oh, I would just die if that happened. The kids be like, oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. And you're like, Travis, that's being ridiculous and extreme. It's like, you can do what you want, but I'm just going to follow what the word says, and I'm not going to take my chance. You can take your chance. Okay, how about that? You can talk about being dead all you want. Uh, There's a scripture in Timothy, I believe, that talks about how one of the kind of the signs that things are nearing the end is when people will start calling bad things good and good things bad. So I think about one of the things that God may have really corrected me on was this is probably 15 years ago, but I still, I guess it's still cool. People still say it. They'll say the word, oh, that was sick. Dude, that was sick. Oh, so sick. Uh, I even hear, hey, pastor, your sermon was sick. And it's like, you called a good thing bad. 
I mean, there's even songs like Michael Jackson and, and you know, others from back in the day, I'm bad to the bone, and I'm bad, I'm bad, you know it. It's like, whole, there's consequence to all these words. Like, let's just, let's just dial these things in, and let's just make sure the words that come out of our mouth and the meditations of our heart are acceptable in his sight. Let's just do that. I, I've just thought of so many more scriptures I could have, maybe should have put in this. I'll, I'll maybe add to them after after we get off here. But let's look at Mark eleven twenty three from Jesus. But both of these are from Jesus right here. He says, truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Remember, we speak and believe. That's what it's talking about here. It's the same pattern. You got to believe. But believes that what he says will take place. It will be done for him. This is what I'm talking about. This is God telling us how things work down here. You guys have experienced this. You guys have lived this out probably daily, but most of the time we do it in the wrong direction. Most of the time we say something in the negative that we believe is going to happen and then it takes place and it is done for us. On the flip side, I want you guys to see that just from a Christian prayer standpoint, we often get this scripture incorrect. We read one thing, but we think another. How many of you guys have prayed to God and asked him to move a proverbial mountain for you? Yeah, I think all of us, right? But it doesn't say to do that. You read this scripture and it tells you to speak to the mountain. It gives you the power and the authority. Just like it did in Job. You decide and decree a thing and it'll be done for you. What do you want to happen? Use your words. Decide. Make a decision. And then decree it. Declare it. This is the authority that you have been given. Jesus said in John 14, 12, he that believeth in me will do the same works I did, but greater. Jesus goes on. So what he says about words in Matthew. This is crazy. You must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit or condemn you. Does the scripture right here say the sins you commit will acquit or condemn you? Or does it say the words you say will get you in trouble or save you? I'm just trying to point out that words are pretty important. And it is all over the Bible. There, there's a, a a good friend of mine. We used to have these talks. When he, when he first started hanging out with us, he, he'd hear us say stuff like this. And... He literally, I remember him saying, your words don't matter. And this guy, <laughs> at the time, he was a youth pastor. And I'm like, man, what, what Bible are you not reading? Because it's not hidden. I just gave you a bunch of scriptures off the top of my head. There's a ton more if I go and like refresh myself and look some more up. I've already quoted two or three that aren't even on here. James 3, almost the whole chapter of James chapter 3 is talking about what your words can do and the power they can have. It's the one where it talks about the rudder of a ship is tiny, but it can control a giant ship and it relates the rudder to your tongue. It says a tiny spark can set a whole forest on fire and it relates your tongue to a spark. Is that whole forest ablaze? It can turn an entire ship. Okay. Have I made my case at least a little bit? God's method, 
that we are to follow too, because Ephesians 5, 1 says, imitate God like children. I've got kids. You know what they do? They talk like me. They sound like me. They even make dad jokes like I do. That's what kids do. They imitate their fathers. He's just saying do the same thing. That was Ephesians 5.1. We covered it up there. God said, let there be light. And light was. The literal translation of that says, light be. He decreed it. He declared it. And it was established for him. Job 22.28. So that's available to us now. So this is different. Here's what I want to teach. This is different than denying something. So God didn't say, it's not dark. Instead, he said, light be, or let there be light. That's different, right? When we're looking at our situations. An interesting one here is in uh, 2 Kings 4.26. I think this is where it calls her the, uh, the, the Shunammite woman. And he says, this is where, if you guys remember this story, her child had died. And she ran to the man of God, and he, he had someone come out and meet her. Please run now to meet her and say to her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She'd been believing God for a child. The prophet prophesied over her. She had a kid, and then the kid died. It's when we had a heat exhaustion in the field. And she answered, it is well. But your kid's dead. Go reread the story. Pretty crazy. But she's playing it out. She's she's walking it out. God's method of operation. She's calling things into existence. Example. If you have a toothache, the faith move is not to say, I don't have a toothache. The faith move is we first believe, then we speak by Jesus' stripes, according to 1 Peter 2.24, I am healed. I am speaking, I am confessing God's word. I'm going to break this. This is going to become super clear to you in just a minute if it's not already. We believe and we speak, I am healed. That is different than denying the pain in your body. This is intentionally using the law that Jesus taught us in Mark 11, 23, and 24 that we just read. And like I said earlier, I believe Jesus here was revealing a law of the universe that God has put into place. Your words, full of faith, can change or accomplish whatever you desire. Matthew 21, 21 is Matthew's version of Mark 11, 23, and 24. This is Matthew's record. And the context for both of these is right after Jesus went to the fig tree, followed the instructions I'm teaching you right now, and says, no one shall eat fruit from you hereafter forever. And the fig tree withered up and died. He spoke, decreed, declared, Spoke the word, got the result, all right? And then the disciples saw that and said, whoa, how would you do that? And this is where Mark eleven twenty two 22 starts. And he says, man, I tell you, just have the faith of God. And he goes into verse 23. If you say to this, say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast to the sea, and do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will happen, it will be done for you. Don't add your own conditions to that. You take the word and you do what it says. You don't need to layer on, only if I perform perfectly will God move the mountain for me. You've already messed up twice. Because it doesn't say your performance factors in, and it doesn't say God moves mountains. It says if you say it and you believe it, it will be done for you. Look at Matthew's version. Jesus says, 
Listen to the truth. If you do not doubt God's power and speak out of faith's fullness, you have faith, you have belief. You can also say to a tree, you can also speak to a tree and it will wither away. He's saying you can do it too. Even more than that, you could say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will be done. We read this stuff, and it might mess with your belief system a little bit. It's like, wait, I've got, I've got power to do. Th- no, traffic, I can't do. It. No, that's God who does everything. It's God who does everything through you. Remember Ephesians three twenty. You guys should probably have that one memorized. It's the one that says, "God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above." All that you could ask, think, or imagine. What's the last part of that scripture? According to the power that worketh in you. That's God's power working in you. It's in you. Now you get to go do something with it. like what Jesus commanded the disciples he didn't say go out and pray for the sick he actually said go out and heal the sick go out and do something you have a power now go do something with it again you've already been operating in this you've already been doing it You've just been doing it in the negative. That's what happens if we're not intentional and we just default to the carnal mind. We just default to the normal way of thinking. You'll say things like, you'll you'll talk about the stock market and you'll talk about how bad it is, how bad it's getting, how it's getting worse. And then it gets worse. You'll talk about how, man, everybody in my house is sick right now. It's just a matter of time before I get it. Kids got it. Wife's got it. Bugs going around. Yeah, all the kids at school are getting it. I heard my kid coughing the other day. So it looks like, looks like we got it. are going to have to hunker down this weekend. You're literally operating in Mark 11, 23 and 24. You are speaking something, believing that you will have it, And then having it. People do it in business all the time. You guys have... Remember my story? I had a mechanic I really liked back in the day. And he was a Christian. His business card had a little Jesus fish on it. And a little scripture. Right? And I really liked this guy. So we would talk when I'd go up there. And we were one day, we go and stand in front of his business, and he goes, yeah, it's going to be a slow year for us this year. And I turned to him, I said, why would you say that? Because I know about this stuff. I read the Bible. And I was like, why would you say that? And he goes, hmm, I just got this sense. Something just tells me it's going to be a slow year. He was out of business by the end of the year. Now, some would say he was thinking that that was God kind of like warning him or letting him in on something. No, it wasn't. None of that's God's nature. Stealing, killing, and destroying is what Satan does. John 10.10. Revenue was stolen. Business was stolen. Had to let people go. Income destroyed. The B part of that verse is is Jesus said, I came to give you life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Life in abundance. That includes business in abundance. So we operate in this. You guys have been using it all the time. 
I'm just trying to get you to be intentional with it now. I want you to become aware of it and say, oh, I could use this on purpose and use it for good. So here's what we're looking to do. We are looking to speak God's truth over our situations. That word confession, don't let it be weird to you. It just means to say the same thing as. The definition of confession is to say the same thing as. So what we want to do is say the same thing as God said. We don't want to say the same thing as the enemy says. It's the reason we can effectively say, I am healed, even when experiencing pain and symptoms. Is because Isaiah 53, 5 says, with the stripes that wounded him, Jesus, we are healed and made whole. We are healed. We are healed. So I'm going to say the same thing as God said. You are healed. But I feel symptoms. But God said you are healed. Matthew 8, 17 confirms it. It says in doing this, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which I just read to you. He put upon himself our weaknesses and he carried away our diseases and made us well. Past tense. He carried away our diseases. They are carried away now. They are gone now. Do you guys get it? We're calling those things in which be not as though they were. Calling those things into existence. We are modeling the method that God uses. I'm not saying, I'm not walking around saying I'm not sick. I am saying I am healed. I am saying I'm made well. How you feeling? I don't have to answer that. I can actually just say, man, I'm healed. I'm well. It is well. And some would say, like, well, you're lying because you obviously still have symptoms. But listen to this, guys. Here's what you have to understand. And here's if this is if what I'm saying right now sounds crazy, it won't be as you study and as you get God's word in you and in your heart, and you begin to speak it and you begin to see it. When that word, I'll put it this way. My my pastor says it like this. And I, re- I have latched onto it. Facts are subject to change. So yes, you might have some pain and some symptoms in your body. But that's subject to change. That's not the truth. The Bible says things that are seen are temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. So your situation is temporary. If you can see it, it can be temporary. It doesn't have to be there forever. It doesn't have to be the truth. How many of you guys truly believe that God's word is the truth? I do. You might need to convince yourself of it a little more sometimes, to be honest. And the way you do that is you come on these Bible studies and then you take these notes And then you go look up the scriptures for yourself in your own Bible. And you start to see what they say and you start to speak them out loud. And you say, God, it says I I am healed. But I don't feel that way. And when somebody says you're lying, you're actually not. Because the truth says you're healed. The truth says Jesus carried away my sickness, diseases, and infirmities. So now I'm going to confess and say the same thing as God said. I'm healed and I am well. My kids, 
So every single night when I tuck them in, we pray. And one of the just kind of the fun things that has evolved in the prayer over time is I would say over them, the Peters never get sick. And then I ask them, do you guys ever get sick? And in unison, they all reply back, nah. And it's like this funny thing. It is cute. But they've been saying it, well, since they can talk. So my oldest has been saying it for over seven years. And there has been a couple of times where she's had, I mean, they really haven't got sick much, I'll be honest with you. They've had cold symptoms, like a face cold, head cold. But they confess this in the midst of that. And I'm telling you, my kids, it gets off them fast. It just it doesn't stay. It just can't stay. I remember when I was growing up, uh, I think, it, I'm not knocking her, but I think it gave my mom a sense of fulfillment when I was sick. You know, take care of me. Like, that feels good to take care of someone. I get it. But man, she would like coddle me and like make, like, it almost like she wanted me to be sick so she could like take care of me. It wasn't that, but kind of. And she didn't know any of this. Uh, but like when my kids get sick, like we don't tolerate it. We'll pray over them. And we'll get them some kids Tylenol if they need it. That kind of thing. But we're speaking this. And even in the midst of the symptoms, I have them speak it too. I'll have them laugh. In Proverbs, what does it say? Laughter does good like a medicine. I'll get them laughing. I'll tickle them even though they don't feel like laughing sometimes. I'll get them laughing because I know what the word says. I also noticed, side note, this is just kind of fun stuff to, for you to take and apply. I noticed that, that I'd see uh, uh, Rachel ask, you know, if, if a kid wasn't feeling well during the day or later, like we'd pray and then maybe an hour later she'd say, how do you feel? And I would notice something that they would be fine, even playing a little bit. But when you asked them how they felt, and then they would stop and focus back on the symptoms, they would get back into whiny mode and pain a little bit. And I saw it happen two, three times. And I was like, well, yeah, because now they're speaking out, I hurt. I'm in pain still, and they're, everything focuses back on the pain. It's just this playing back out. It's just the mode, the method. It's just happening all around us. But we got to dissect it. So I stopped asking them how they feel, and I'm telling you, they get over stuff so quick. So we talked about health right there. Now our words, uh, bonus points when it talks about health. You guys go look up. There's some really cool stuff in James chapter 3 about how your words can bridle your whole body. Your words can tell your body what to do. And your body has to listen to it. It's one I was talking about where your tongue is like the rudder of a ship. Your tongue is like a spark that could set a whole forest on fire. It talks about how difficult it is for man to tame the tongue without the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. But your tongue's powerful. I mean, Solomon told us, the power of life and death are in your tongue. You can live because of the power in your tongue. There's a consequence to your words. So we talked about health. Let's talk about money for a minute. I want my Bible studies to be as practical as possible because I want your behavior to change. When your behavior changes, you can get new results. So these principles that we are learning applies everywhere, including your finances, including health, family, including your marriage, including if you're single and want to get married. All this, this is just God telling you how it works. Use this on purpose. So the reason, so like if you look at your bank account and there's not a lot in there, I feel like it would be unwise 
to talk about lack and scarcity. You guys ever have something, you get ahead financially, and then an unexpected bill comes, something breaks down, car breaks, got to get new tires, something happens, and you go, man, every time I get ahead, something happens that knocks me back again. I have said that many, many times. Well, have you guys noticed what happens the more you say that? The more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you speak it, right? Following the pattern. Believe, then speak. Believe, then speak. What's the third part? You believe it, you speak it, you get it. So next time you get ahead financially, you start to expect something to take you back a peg. You expect it, you believe it, you speak it, you have it. So when you look at our finances, I want to call my bank accounts blessed. I want to call them full and overflowing. You know why? Because I want to say the same thing about them that God said about them. I want to call my business abundantly blessed and a blessing to everybody who comes in contact with it. Why do you want to speak that? Because that's what God said about it. I want to confess and say the same thing that he said. If the enemy steals, kills, and destroys, why would I say that about my business? My friend with the mechanic shop, he just said that about his business. He just confessed the same thing as the enemy. You're going under. I think he thought it was God warning him or something and he was being like extra spiritual. He's actually extra deceived. Because his business got stole and he let it happen. He just believed it and then he spoke it. And then he got it. It's just playing out the formula. Look at Deuteronomy 28, 8. The Lord will command the blessing. Do you guys know what the scripture is in here? The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and all that you undertake. Command the blessing. That's powerful. The New Living Translation says he will guarantee the blessing upon you, your storage places, and all that you put your hand to. Guaranteed blessing. Money back guarantee. So I can go say that about my accounts. I can call them blessed. And my bank accounts are blessed and overflowing. There's plenty of margin in my finances. Plenty of breathing room with lots extra left over so I can give to every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It's another great one. I'm going to put it in there. Y'all look it up. My favorite version of it is the Amplified Classic. You'll get bonus points. Look at Deuteronomy 28, 11. Do you guys know this scripture is in there? And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Not going super deep, that applies to you. Because he's talking about the Abrahamic covenant. Galatians 3.29 says you are now in the Abrahamic covenant. Make you have a surplus of prosperity. What is surplus? Extra. Overflow. But you're saying, Trav, why am I not having that? Most likely... Because you've been using the law that Jesus laid out for you in reverse. Most likely because you talk about how unblessed you are and how cursed you are and how broke you are and how things are so hard and the economy and inflation and the president and my market this and my niche that and my industry this. Rates are, interest rates are high. So just my, my, you know, my business are, you're in real estate. 
and you just walk around talking about interest rates being so high. This is, this is hard right now. People talking about, man, it's just hard to find employees. Nobody wants to work. My buddy Sheldon, who you guys have seen on the YouTube channel, hopefully, you can watch my YouTube channel. You see my YouTube channel? He just posted for a warehouse position here in Tulsa, a, a smaller market, uh, to s literally sweep and keep his warehouse clean. He had 70 people apply the first day he posted. Because my man doesn't walk around talking about it's hard to find good help these days. He doesn't walk around saying no, it's hard. It's just no one wants to work. Do you know how many times I've heard that being said? I've heard that from business owners over and over and over. I'm like, believing in your heart, speaking it, having it. You're just following the following the formula. And they're all Christians. All these people love God. I'm just trying to make you aware of what God made available to you. He will make you have a surplus of prosperity. I'm going to start saying that over my bank accounts. I'm going to start saying that over my investments. Psalms 112.3, this is one of my favorite, Psalms 112 in general. Uh, I call it, in my mind, I label it the profile of a Christian. And it tells of a successful man whose family is successful, who he is personally successful. And it also talks about how integrous he is, how righteous he is, the good deeds he does for the Lord. So when people have these misconceptions of a wealthy person, they have to be you know, you have to stab people in the back and you have to kind of lie, cheat, and steal and be compromised and kind of have a little evil and a little serving money and a little, not according to Psalms 112. It even says wealth and riches will be in your house and your righteousness will endure. That's a righteous person who's wealth, wealthy and rich. I've started saying that. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. If you honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency and the first fruits of all your income, so we talk about tithing and giving, honoring the Lord with our finances, he tells you what will happen. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty. What's really great is he's saying, hey, if you do your part, I'll do mine and fill your storage places with plenty. We don't have storage places, but we have Savings accounts, we have bank accounts. You might be a farmer, you might have a real storage place, but all that means is you're storing money up for a later use. Your vats will overflow with new wine, overflowing. Do you see the nature of things? Surplus, extra, overflow, plenty. I like Malachi 310 in the message translation. Bring your full tithe into the temple treasury so there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out a blessing beyond your wildest dreams. Most of the other translations say, pour you out a blessing so great you won't have room to contain it all. Well, if you can't contain it all, that's overflow. Overflow will be there. Plenty. Surplus beyond your wildest dreams. God's saying, you take care of my house. That's what the tithe does. It takes care of that local church where you're spiritually fed. All right, that's where you tithe. You tithe there. He said, you're taking care of my, here it's specifically talking about priests. Today, there would be pastors. You're taking care of my people. I'm gonna take care of you. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven for you myself. I'm speaking this stuff now, getting back to t speaking this stuff over your accounts, over your life, over your health, over your marriage. You're talking about this stuff. Man, what do you need to say over your marriage to get the result that you want? Or if you're single, what do you need to believe and speak to get the man or woman that God has for you? Wrap up with this. People stay stuck in their current circumstances because they keep saying what they have. So they end up having what they say. You don't go anywhere. You just keep talking about 
how it is. But that's not the method that God put into play. My parents, when they will talk to my other relatives, most are in their 70s. Every time they talk, all they do is just swap stories of how sick they are and how this thing's wrong and this doctor said this and, oh yeah, I got this thing now. And it's like this, let's share war stories of all the symptoms and whatever, how things are getting worse. And in the natural, it's like, yeah, that's that's what happens. That's how it goes. But that's not what God's word says about health and healing. It even Moses was 120 when he died. And it said his eyesight didn't even grow dim. Caleb, Caleb or Joshua, he went to go conquer a mountain when he was 85. Right, there's, there's like, I could, I could keep going on the health stuff. Don't confess and say the same thing as the devil is saying about you. Most do not realize that we're doing this. Don't go to God and say, God, it's not working. Y'all prayed that prayer? God, it's not working. Why isn't it working? Yep. I've said it a lot. What's God saying when you say that to him? Hey, who said it's not working? I guess that'd be the enemy. My opponent. Yeah. Let's stop saying the same thing he's saying. Let's start saying what God's word says. When you go and you say it's not working, you're putting the law into practice. You're putting it into play. You're activating it. It's not working. You're believing it's not working. You're speaking it's not working. So it's not working. Something the Lord about two years ago, because I was doing this, that he brought to me and he said, Travis, stop saying it's not working. And stop asking me why it's not working. He said, from this point on, you say it is working. It is all working. And you do not receive any doubt that says otherwise. Well, what would say otherwise? Bank account, symptom in your body, something with the relationship. You keep on speaking the desired end result. We've got the scriptures to back it up. So I'm saying the same thing as God said. I'm, I'm saying the same thing about my bank accounts that he said about my bank account. I'm saying the same thing about health and healing that he said about health and healing. That's all we're doing. Jesus said, you only hear me say what I hear my father say. So I'm, I'm posing that to you, is what if you only said what the father said about your situations? Like the example with my child earlier. I was talking about they got symptoms, maybe they weren't feeling well. And we start to ask them how they're feeling. They start to speak out pain. They start to, their elder focus, everything starts going towards that negative deal, that negative part. And so it's magnified, it's amplified. Feels that, yeah, we only have to say what our father says. But what's great is we have, the, I don't know how many words are in here, hundreds of thousands of words of what our father said. And they're all good. They're all good things to say. The more you speak about a situation, the more you think about the situation, your beliefs, your lives, your life, your results, and everything will start to go in that direction. Not you guys, but you all know somebody who's extremely negative. They're always speaking negative. And you know what? A lot of them speak in absolutes, don't they? Well, they will say this bad thing is going to happen. Yeah, going to be lots of layoffs. Yeah, I'll be next to go. Yeah, it's just a matter of time before I get laid off. 
Or you could say a thousand may fall at my left, 10,000 at my right, but it won't come near me. It takes some boldness, it takes some guts to talk like that, but it's what this said. Everyone at your office might be getting sick, but if you got some faith, you believe and you speak, it's not going to happen to me. A thousand people on that side of your business can get sick, 10,000 on that side, but it's not going to come near me in my house. Most people won't say that. They don't know they can or they don't have the guts to. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, what always comes with the Holy Spirit? Boldness. You'll be bold if you want these results. Or you can talk like everybody else and get sick like everybody else. You say broke like everybody else. You live paycheck to paycheck like everybody else. And I was saying these are magic words in like a spell you cast. Don't, no, I don't think anyone's thinking that. I hope no one's thinking that. I'm telling you how to activate the power in his words. And your situation, like a ship, like a rudder, a ship doesn't turn instantly. But it begins to turn instantly. So as you begin to speak right now, your ship, your life is going to start to turn in the direction of your words. So if there's an area that you don't like where you're headed, let's start turning that ship now with our tongues. And I'm not like like I said, I'm not saying it will happen overnight, but it will start right now. And there will be some fast results along the way. There will be some things that take a little longer, but you might as well start getting on track this very moment. Might as well change what we say about our business and our finances and our industry and all those different things right now. Does help anybody? Any questions? I know we've gone an hour. So thank you guys for hanging out this long. Feel free. If you got to go, you got to go. I get it. But man, I appreciate y'all being on here. I, I hope that what I gave you was enough for your behavior to change because you truly learned today. You've got something to go do now. You've got something to go implement. And you can run with it. Let's throw our takeaways in the chat, guys. What what'd you get out of the tip out of uh today's Bible study? What did the Holy Spirit just quicken you? You're like, that's for me. Throw it in the chat. We want to hear it. Love the feedback we're getting. Yeah, people are saying it helped me. Thank you so much. Being a blessing always, such an encouragement, such a good message. I am healed. Also, Travis just dropped the link to the note, so make sure you got that. Andrew said, speak to the mountain. I love it. Bianca said, to stop saying it's not working. Yeah, Andrew, the word is true. This is some good stuff, guys. I'll have what I say, good or bad. Wow. Yes, Bethany, you are welcome. Yeah, Penny says, say what God said. Wow, I love this, guys. This is so good. Melissa said, this is all lining up with where I am, quitting my cleaning job right now, joining the Increase Academy, and it's all been confirmation. We're excited for you, Melissa. Let us know when you joined. If you haven't, if you haven't joined already, when you do join, let us know. We want to make sure we get you connected, get you on a coaching call, and make sure we get you going in the right direction so you can hit the ground running as soon as possible. Eric, yes, Travis just put that link in the chat uh, where you can go get the notes to everything that he just shared on the screen. He just replied to you there. And so make sure everyone take advantage of that for sure. Um, yeah, F Fields said faith isn't just saying the opposite, but saying what the Bible says about the circumstance. Isn't that powerful, Fields? That's powerful. We're not denying the facts. We're speaking the truth. We're agreeing with the truth. Oh, I love that. So good. Confession is saying what God says. I love it. Darlene, I have to speak God's confession over my life to fall my mind to God's word. That's right, Darlene. That's it. That's it. it it's got to be default. Come on, Shannon, speaking life into everything. I love it, Shannon. Start today, speaking God's truth. You got it. And yes, Holly said, reminded me that 
the word my words have power. I looked up Psalms 106, 24. It says the people rejected the blessed land because they didn't believe a word of what God promised. We have to believe what God promised. That's so good, Holly. Right on. That's it. That's it. Guys, don't let this just be a feel good. Like Travis said, this is something that should change our behavior. So let's ask ourselves, now that we have this information, this insight that God has given us today, what is going to change? What is going to change? Ask yourself that question and answer it. Don't let it be a rhetorical question for you. Actually give an answer. What are you going to do differently? How are you going to behave differently now that you have this new understanding or a deepened understanding of the truth of God's word that was revealed today. Write that down, whatever it is, write it down. I don't want you to forget it. I don't want you to lose it. Let it flow from you and maybe share it with somebody. That's the greatest way that we can test our learning is if we can communicate it to someone, someone else. Maybe your family member, could be someone you work with, somebody that needs this word. Wow, you've been given this word, not just for yourself, but for someone else too. Let it bless them as well. Let it get deep down inside of you and let it come out of your actions today. Guys, thanks so much for being on. We're going to have an awesome rest of the week. On Saturday is our fitness call with Coach Derek. I want to encourage you, if you haven't been on one of those, take some time if you're a uh, supporter of Increased Life Ministries at any level, you get access to our Saturday fitness calls with Coach Derek and that program there. Also, on Monday, we're going to be doing another Make Money Mondays, and so I want to encourage you to bring your increase method steps or elements, or if you want to do them with us, that's part of what we do on that call turn on some awesome, inspiring music, and you get to be with a room full of people that are designing their day or their week, and they're dialing in their RGAs, tracking their time. So many different things you can do. That happens on Mondays at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then, of course, we've got our Thursday, or excuse me, our 30-day challenge. And you get a lot going on. Call. You get a lot going on. A lot going on, but it's all... It's all great, man, because it's, it's changing my life. It's helping me. It's helping so many others, and that's a lot of fun. Trav, what you what you got? Um, Yeah, hey, Eric, I see your message there. Uh, what's your – drop your email in there. We'll, we'll get someone connected with you. Um, so if you guys are, like I said, supporters at any level, um, we're giving you access to the 30-day challenge and, and kind of everything right now uh, because we want to get you guys – a kickstart and we want to get you guys boosted and going in that right direction. We have a ton of momentum and just like I said, we got, we got a calls on Monday. They're going to help you design your time. We're going to help you with your finances, help you generate new revenue. So we call them make money Mondays right now. Uh, Tuesdays, we have our accelerator call. So this is where we hop on together and you can get a hot seat session. You can ask questions and some different things like that. They're just going to help you. We have a framework called the increase method framework. And what it does is it teaches you how to design your day in a way that makes your success automatic. And we, we dial it out through different categories of life. It's crazy powerful. It's awesome. Come hang out with us. Thursdays, we do the Bible study. And then Saturdays, uh, we have a fitness call. We have a coach who is just anointed and passionate about just helping you get to where you want to be with your fitness. It's nothing crazy, but it is falls in line with what we teach. And now we, we teach a 20-mile march system with everything that we do. Every day, everything's broken out into bite-sized chunks that makes it easy and smooth and gets you to where you want to go. And we cover your faith, finances, family, fitness, and fulfillment, all the areas. So if you are a current supporter and you you, you haven't dove into that stuff, um, do this. I want to make sure you guys are clear because like Eric said, we do have a lot going on and, and I know we can get better at dialing in, uh, you know, Clear and concise, which is coming soon. Uh, basically, we've had a lot of programs. We are in the we are in the midst of making everything into one simple streamlined scenario. But currently, it's not there yet. It's coming soon. We're working on it. So, if you're saying, "Trav, I don't know what I have access to," once you do this, just email me personally, 
I'll take care of it. It's uh, Travis at the increase method.com. And I'll just give you some simple links. We'll get you in all the stuff in the community and everything like that. So appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. You guys are awesome. See you on the See you guys. Have a great one.